Whilst to be fair to say that the past couple of days have been comparatively quiet in terms of Overwatch League off-season news, that's not to say that there haven't been some major developments since my last video I'll be discussing today. As a follow-up from my post yesterday though, I just want to quickly again thank everyone for the support that you've all been giving me on these videos, and you can expect more regular World Cup content over the next week as well. Of course, the obvious place to start is with the Paris Eternal, who have really stolen the headlines over the past few days, starting with last Thursday, when they announced that Rush, the former Element Mystic head coach, would be joining the team at the head coaching position. Understandably, Twitter went into a frenzy following this announcement, as it all but confirmed the rumours that have been circulating throughout the week about a player who would be joining him on the Eternal, with the team even teasing his arrival the day before with a video captioned, Let There Be Light. Just 30 minutes later, we had the official confirmation, as Sparkle was unveiled as Paris' latest arrival on their Twitter. And whilst most were incredibly excited by this announcement, the immediate question on most people's lips was why Paris, when there were certainly other teams who would have been interested in the pair, with the final destination of Paris coming as quite a shock and surprise to many. According to Halo of Forts though, the reason why they chose to join Paris was because the team wanted to bring them in as a pair, with both Russia and Sparkle having already agreed personally they wanted to enter the league together, so subsequently despite receiving higher paid solo offers, they eventually settled in the Eternal, which does make a lot of sense if that reasoning is true, which I imagine it is. In Rush, they now have an excellent head coach that has proven himself incredibly capable at the tier 2 level of Element Mystic, most recently winning the gauntlet, but also achieving success for the team with Pacific Showdown and the first 2019 season of Korean Contenders, and I expect him to bring in a winning mentality and experience to the Paris Orc, whilst acting as a familiar face to some of the new acquisitions. As for Sparkle, his high level of interest this offseason alone should tell you what a talented young prospect he is, having shown his DPS skill and ability with some fantastic displays most recently at the Gauntlet, as well as within Korean contenders, particularly on his signature Doomfist pick. He's a player that many will have high expectations of, but it is crucial to remember that he's still 17 at the moment, and therefore won't be eligible to play in the Overwatch League till his 18th birthday on the 31st of May next year, about halfway through the season, so we'll have to wait a little bit to see what he can truly do, and it might not be till 2021 that we see his full potential, perhaps we can see his arrival like Sinatra's in Season 1. Whilst Russian Sparkle stole the headlines though, it's not to say that Paris were completely done with their announcements, as they went on to reveal later that day that they were adding Levi and A to their coaching staff. Levi was previously an assistant on Shanghai Dragons, but was also a member of the Element Mystic coaching staff before that, so his reunion here with Rush makes a lot of sense given their previous working relationship. As for Raid, he announced that with his move into coaching he was retiring as a pro player and was hoping to use his experience to help others from a coaching role, and given the experience of the coaching staff around him, I think he'll be given support in his transition to his new responsibility, and will hope to add another dimension to what looks to be a very well-rounded coaching staff for Paris in 2020. This ended their Thursday announcements, but the Eternal returned with more news the following day on Friday, showing off then two new signings at Hanbin and Exe, again both teammates of Sparkle formerly on Element Mystic. With all the attention being placed on Sparkle during the gauntlet, you'd be forgiven for overlooking how well Hanbin played during the tournament itself on Sigma, with his early performances in particular arguably carrying the team with some exceptional ability usage on the hero. Overall, I think he's a fantastic option at off-tank for Paris next season, in light of his pre-existing synergy with Rush and Sparkle, even if he misses a couple of games due to him not being 18 till a couple of weeks into the Overwatch League season. Exe, meanwhile, is another talented DPS player who, whilst recently being confined to the bench due to the meta, can certainly offer the Eternal plenty of other options should the meta change, and with his hero pool largely overlapping with Soons, he will not only give a bit of competition at the position, hopefully making the pair play better, but also potentially allows the team to more fluidly transition between their French core and new Korean signings. This is an aspect of Paris' moves this offseason that we won't fully see realised before the season starts, but I'm fascinated to see how in light of the exit of many of their previous players, how this roster is going to be constructed on stage. Currently it appears that the Eternal are going for a more mixed approach, with the likes of Sparkle perhaps pairing with Soon, Hanbin besides Benbest, whilst Cruz leaves from the main support position, an approach that teams like the Fusion and Shock have shown to have worked well, but should the team make more moves during this offseason, perhaps there is the potential for Paris to run a split Korean and European roster in the future, so they are definitely a team to watch early on in 2020. Indeed, I could probably keep going on about the Paris Eternal for this entire video, but there are still other news updates that have dropped since my last video, which I want to get on to discussing now, beginning with the Guangzhou charge, as they announced that both Rio and Charo would be returning to the team in 2020. We already were aware that they were under contract, but given that some teams be trading and offloading players with these sorts of contract statuses, it's nice to get some official confirmation that these two will be returning to the charge for next season. Starting with Rio, his return is completely understandable given how well he played for Guangzhou last season, as he was at least in my opinion one of the more consistent and underrated main tanks all last season, and definitely will be a welcome returner. Chara meanwhile had a more volatile 2019, with some good performances, but at the same time some memorable shaky displays as well. But given how publicly the team has praised his leadership and shot calling ability, it comes as no surprise to me that he's been kept on for another year as well. 
What's a solid start to the off-season for the charge? They'll probably want to reassure fans soon that currently team option stars like Happy, Nero and Chu will be getting re-signed. So it's looking at the free agent market as well if they want to take the step up next year, with the team on the playoff cusp and I believe still full of untapped potential. Most of the other news since my last video though relates to moves in the coaching space rather than a flurry of player moves that we saw at the beginning of last week. The LA Valiant confirmed their coaching staff for 2020 by bringing back Gumba to the side as an assistant coach. Whilst it was confirmed that Packing 10 will be staying on as head coach, with Stoop as an associate head coach and Reprise as the other assistant alongside Gumba. Whilst I know fans are a little worried about the state of the team as a whole, following the loss of many of their star players, they can take some solace in having this experienced coaching staff that the organisation is really happy with in place, especially considering the other sides are still without coaches at the moment. It was also really good to see the team come out and explain the moves we've been seeing from them in a letter to their fans, with the gist being they're working within a budget and putting a higher priority on scouting. I think this approach makes them more transparent and helps fans to see in what direction the team is looking to go in. And whilst people might not be happy with it, with potentially a tough 2020 on the horizon, there's always the potential for the scouting approach to pay off massively with the Valiant doing a Season 1 Boston, but you have to give them at least a chance and they're a team I'll be watching closely through the first half of next season. In other coaching moves, it was revealed that Dream would be joining the staff of the Houston Outlaws, having previously worked with the Montreal Rebellion, and whilst personally I don't know exactly what he can bring to the table, with Harsher at the helm, one would imagine he thinks that Dream can be a contributor to the team on the coaching staff, so that should hopefully pan out well. As for the Philadelphia Fusion, they announced that alongside Roston becoming an assistant general manager in the front office, former Seoul Dynasty coach KDG would be their new head coach. This is a really interesting move for the Fusion, that perhaps suggests the team is looking to further add to their mixed roster with a higher integration of Korean talent, and given KDG's ability in the past to utilise the full 12-man roster limit, even if sometimes unorthodox, it could perhaps give Philly an extra dimension in 2020. Many players being rumoured to be joining their setup, but hopefully we'll learn more from them soon. The last thing I want to discuss today is a Toronto Defiant, who despite all the rumours circulating around their roster, didn't come out with any major arrivals. Instead, they announced that the previously team option logics would definitely be with the team for 2020. This didn't exactly come as a surprise to many, given how he was one of their best and most consistent players upon his arrival halfway through 2020, but it's good to see he's definitely back, and potentially lined up to play alongside some other very talented individuals at a DPS position, which could make their attacking threat super scary for next season. This wasn't all the Defiant had to announce though, as they parted ways with coach Moby Dick before announcing just today that Lilbo would be a new member of their coaching staff. I can't say that I have much of an opinion of Moby Dick, but from reading the responses by the players from Toronto, he was clearly a very likeable member of the coaching staff, and some were sad to see him go. As for Lilbo though, it will be very interesting to see how his endeavour as the coaching goes, given that up to now he's been a contender's main support on successful teams like Agante and the infamous Eagle Gaming. So I'm curious to see how Feifei wishes to utilise his experience and likely communication skills he's developed at the position over the last couple of years in his new coaching role. But just when I think that I have this video sorted and ready to go, the Boston Uprising finally make a signing in the off-season, and they do so with a bang, as they just announced an apology for my pronunciation that they've added Myeongbong to their roster. This just shows that for all the criticism you might receive, Huck and the Uprising scouting staff are fantastic at what they do, as they've got themselves a steal in Myeongbong at the flex support position, having enjoyed success on O2 Blast for the past year. He's incredibly talented and mechanically skilled at his position, and I was very surprised to hear that apparently very few teams were interested in trialling him. It was also announced that they had picked up Jerry from Metrofina at the DPS position, and given how few people know who he is, this is a typical move of the Boston Uprising their scouting. Personally, I haven't seen much of his play at all. With a name like Jerry to go with his body, you can already tell he's an absolute chad. On a stream AMA, Kalk explained that both of these players are top performers at their respective positions within Boston's tryout process, and he's really excited to have them on board, with the team fully committed to developing upcoming unseen talent as a priority, rather than going for big names entirely so it'll be really interesting to see how both of these players perform for Boston next year under the guidance of their new head coach Mineral. However, on that note, that's everything I've got in regards to Overwatch League news since my last video, and I'd like to thank you for watching. As I mentioned before, I'm planning to make a few Overwatch World Cup videos over the next few days, including information about the schedule and format. So if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.